Hello, everyone, and welcome to our session, uh, A Tale of Emeshi Kafka. Um, my name is Ariel Schuper. Uh, by the time of the recording, I'm in Port Shift. Uh, but I'm, by the time of the, when we hear this session, I'm going to be part of Cisco. Hello from me, Ariel, as well. I'm very happy to be part of this event today. Thank you, Nicolas. Um, what we're going to talk to you about today, we'll tell you who we are and a little bit more details. Uh, we'll talk about Kafka usage in general and in Kubernetes uh, specifically. Uh, we'll talk about the security architecture or how do we secure ca Kafka clusters. Um, we'll talk about Kafka and Istio uh, or any type of service mesh. Um, and then Nicolas will talk about uh, Marlon architecture and how do they secure the deployment uh, and will share with us uh, a great demo. A little bit about myself, who am I? So my name is Ariel Schuper. Uh, I'm a principal product manager at Cisco. Uh, used to be a VP product management in PortShift. PortShift is the cloud native security vendor. Uh, before working in PortShift, I was the head of serverless solution at Aqua Security. Um, and before that, I led the cloud security solutions in Checkpoint Software Technologies. Uh, part of uh, open source, uh, the, uh, the QB project that we in PortShift uh, created, and also a member of the Istio Security Working Group. Um, a, bit, a little bit about PortShift, who we are, we're founded uh, by 2018, uh, then uh, acquired by Cisco uh, beginning of November, beginning of this, uh, the beginning of this month. Uh, focusing on cloud native security platform uh, and more specifically on integrating it with service mesh, any type of service mesh. Um, and that's it about me. I'm Nicolas Musaros. I worked in telecommunication, currency exchange, commercial companies, and now I'm glad to be part of two organizations as a DevOps engineer. The first, one, the first one is Marlow Navigation, and now I'm trying to start my own startup business, RTX Direct, which is providing uh, cloud-native services. Global and commercial ship management company uh, with offices in over 10 countries, over 1,000 shore-based employees, and over 13,000 employees on board at any given time. So let's go ahead with Ariel. Thank you, Nicolas. And let's talk about get into the details. And let's talk about a little bit about microservices communication. So we are moving to microservices. Okay, microservices um, usually look like that. We when we're working in distributed applications, we start breaking down monolithic into small uh, components. We want each of them to communicate with with each other. So we are creating, you know, a nice communication uh, schema. But then eventually when the cluster grows and there are more uh, more elements, we can quickly turn into this famous uh, diagram that shows the lift uh, microservices communication before they started uh, the project with Envoy and before they moved to service mesh. Um, and the idea is that, you know, when we have lots of microservices, a lot of communication, I'm not going to talk about uh, whether or not uh, service mesh is the, is the right uh, way to choose it, but we can talk about lots of microservices communicating with each other. We can use it like the mesh in synchronous mechanism that everyone uh, can communicate with everyone synchronously, but we can also use uh, asynchronous uh, communication or asynchronous message passing uh, with there are multiple options. Uh, Kafka, Apache Kafka, just a popular one, but there are many other options of how we can use uh, event streaming uh, between services uh, which are not uh, synchronous. Now, we would like to talk about Apache Kafka, you know, as a popular uh, event streaming mechanism. Uh, Apache Kafka was 
you know, becoming a pop very popular tool was donated by LinkedIn to the open source community in 2011 as a message queue quickly turned into be like an event streaming. So we're not just uh, making like some simple computation uh, actions on messages. We can run multiple actions on multiple messages simultaneously. Uh, we can also maintain uh, persistency with keeping up the messages. There are many benefits to, to Apache Kafka and to the way uh, it is used today for asynchronous communication. Now, our focus today, and Nicolas will elaborate it a little bit more when you talk about architecture, is on uh, an open source distribution of Kubernetes called Streamzy. Um, and Streamzy goal is to simplify the process of running Kafka in Kubernetes. Uh, it provides, you know, the relevant container images. Uh, Streamzy also created uh, dedicated operators uh, that can run the, uh, you know, the Kafka cluster and can add a lot of uh, support or a lot of uh, simp to simplify uh, those these operations and to make it, you know, more uh, cloud native way by automating a lot of those uh, things. Um, and the Kafka components run as a cluster, so it can be like, you know, for availability purposes. Um, and as I said again, uh, Nicholas will explain more about the benefits of using it. Now, when we talk about uh, Kafka and we want to talk about, you know, the different security challenges, so how do we secure this environment? Um, it's important to know that Kafka does require some level of security. By, by nature, the default setting is that, you know, um, the different configuration allow any user uh, to read or write or publish or subscribe, uh, you know, any or all the data. So you can you know, publish or subscribe to any topic. So you get a full exposure. Um, the communication is in plain text. Uh, if you don't do anything specifically and you know, and you go and configure the TLS uh, between your users and their brokers, the communication is in plain text. So if someone uh, can intercept it in the cluster, I can get exposed to all the uh, communication. There's no need to you know decrypt it. Uh, users can delete the data. Uh, and in some distributions, uh, the secrets or credentials are stored in plain text. So you, you want to restrict the access of people who can uh, access those, you know, uh, the zookeeper uh, location. So by, by default, uh, there are many, uh, I would say, security challenges, but, you know, uh, given the maturity of the product, a lot of them, you know, were taken care of, were handled. Uh, more specifically, uh, talking about Streamsy Kafka, looking at the main security building block, so the authentication, um, User, user authentication can can be managed. Kafka listeners use authentication so they can ensure secure client connection. Um, it does support different authentication different authentication option. Uh, there is a dedicated user operator that can simplify some of them. But as you can see that, you know, in practice, not all of them are always in use, but at least the foundation or the infrastructure to use them uh, is available. Uh, authorization, the native authorization in Kafka is using the simple ACL authorizers. Uh, it's based on authentication of users and then you allow, if you have users authenticated and identified, you can define uh, access control list and you can define what user can access what resource. Um, encryption in Streams is with TLS. Uh, so the communication is always encrypted in the uh, main control elements, like between the brokers, the zookeeper nodes, the operator, and the exporter. Um, you, you know, encrypting the user traffic, the user communication uh, with the brokers is something that, re that is require user intervention and, and, and making it um, with the TLS option. So then I was talking about security in Kubernetes. Kubernetes offer rich set of security mechanism. Um, there's a lot of investment, a lot of work, and also coming from the maturity of the of Kubernetes in its deployment, there are multiple options for security, both for deployments, for services, for policies, but also for authentication, authorization, and you know, powerful role-based access control. Now, when service mesh is used, 
Uh, it provides flexible option to offload out of it. A lot of, you know, the authentication, the authorization decisions. Uh, the encryption is a completely different experience when you're using service mesh. So all in all, the security posture of cluster is, is much higher. Now, this leads us to think that when we deploy Kafka in Kubernetes and with Istio, um, we'll be in a much better stage because the, Kubernetes, the Kafka security and the Kubernetes security, although they are, you know, they don't match, but if we're using it with Kubernetes, um, then we can get the benefit of all the existing tools, uh, especially, you know, Istio can use, uh, like it does today, can contribute, you know, seamlessly to the security level because it's doing it, you know, using offloading the traffic, not touching, modifying or changing anything in the workload. So this would come make a think that uh, the security, security situation, the security status uh, can be much better. Now, what we discovered and also together uh, with Marlo is that Istio and Kafka are not, you know, the best match, or I would say it, uh, they are not a match made in heaven. And it stems from multiple reasons, you know, but when you come to think about it, that, you know, Kafka and Zookeeper were both designed to have all the required resources available at startup time. Uh, in current Kubernetes version sidecars, like the Envoy proxy uh, availability can today still be after the pod is already running. Um, and as a result, we can see that, for example, in Zookeeper, it can lead to instability operation that members can't create a, for, uh, a quorum uh, with the brokers. Uh, if a broker tries to communicate with the Zookeeper and Envoy is not ready or not available, uh, the broker will crash. Uh, we also saw that in Zookeeper installation, um, it bound, binds it to the pod IP but Envoy uses localhost for uh, forwarding traffic and the result can be connection refused errors and some other uh, challenges that uh, we, we happen to found. And unfortunately, this leave us, you know, with situation that still from one side we do deploy the Kafka, we can benefit from all those great tools, but the reality is that those are, cannot be used. Now, what, you know, the way to move forward and really secure and benefit from what uh, Kubernetes and what Service Mesh can offer Kafka is, you know, if we can really make some uh, small changes or do something which some have already in the work, but some uh, can be done. So what, what are the requirements? What do we need in order to make Kafka and Istio a perfect match, right? So in order to create what we call a Kafka-friendly Istio or a Kafka-friendly Service Mesh, um, something that will let us, you know, to benefit from all the security controls in an automated and, and smooth, you know, for existing users, but also more importantly for future users which are deployed and you want to connect, you know, with the Kafka cluster. There are two critical elements that, you know, need to be fixed in order to get this uh, Kafka friendly level uh, expectation. One of it, which is already in the work, was supposed to be part of 1.18, 1 1.19, but I believe it will uh, be in the next in the next version. Definitely, going to be uh, included. Is making a sidecar first class citizen uh, part of Kubernetes? Now, what do I mean, first class citizen? Making sure that when uh, a sidecar uh, container like Envoy is deployed with every pod, uh, you know, making sure that the, this sidecar is up before the regular containers are up and making sure it's shut down only after all the other containers are terminated. And, and this will make will assure that there's not all the challenges we discussed in the previous slide will not happen because Envoy will always be there so we can both zookeepers and the brokers uh, can establish their communication without worrying about it. But that, that, that's not it. There, there is some little bit more tweaking that is required. And you know, thanks to the flexibility of Envoy, and Istio, this is something that was already available since 1.5. And this is adding a special detection to Kafka traffic, either by enhancing the current Kafka filter, because today Envoy supports uh, a filter for detecting Kafka traffic, but there's slightly more that needs to be done, or creating a new filter or a new proxy for Envoy, uh, which again, also, you know, post 1.5 uh, is much, simpler to do. 
Now, as I said before, so one, there are infrastructure issues which are being main, uh, done or managed in Kubernetes, already part of the release plan, and it's going to be, you know, included uh, probably in the next version. But there are some, you know, modification to Envoy, uh, which are required in order to make it, you know, uh, Kafka friendly. Um, so if we will achieve that, we can run Envoy proxy in all Kafka elements, whether it's broker, brokers, zookeepers, subscribers, and producers. Um, if we can use similar mechanism like today with HTTP, kind of a proxy uh, that allow us to parse the Kafka stream and uh, you know send it for authentication uh, and authorization, so we can authorize any request. Now this can be done uh, either by enhancement to the current filter or by using the new WebAssembly uh, toolkit, uh, which allow you to customize and create uh, customized filters for Envoy, like an on-demand. Um, and then, you know, we can use Envoy to invoke authorization for every message based on its layer seven properties. We can, of course, uh, authorize it. Uh, we can create policies. Those policies will authorize. We can, of course, cache the results. So it's not going to be like every request only for a uh, new connection or new service. But it's something that will allow us, you know, to benefit from a fully authorized uh, mechanism that allow users to define the rules. Uh, Envoy can enforce it, can create it just like we do today with our HTTP communication. Now, Envoy can also pass uh, authentication information to Kafka authorizers, uh, and Envoy can seamlessly encrypt, uh, encrypt and manage all the certificates uh, you know, of the cluster, of the brokers, of the users. There's no need uh, to work on the TLS certificates for the users. We can also take it a step forward and do all the ingress and the egress communication. We can manage them uh, and using the service mesh policies. So with having the right filters uh, and some little bit of help, we can really reach level of a very Kafka-friendly Istio that will allow us to benefit uh, from all, you know, the inherent security which are included. So how is the structure is going to look like? Um, so this is going to be like we're going to inject the Istio or the Envoy proxy to consumer pods, producer pods, Zookeeper, and the Kafka broker. The Istio control plane uh, will... Uh, make sure that everything is encrypted and, you know, the, the, the envoy will encrypt the traffic, uh, you know, get the certificates and, and of course, uh, rotate when it's rotated, but can encrypt the traffic as soon as it's leave the, 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 uh, consumer, um, or the producer containers. Uh, when it reaches the broker, the broker, uh, will for, will forward the traffic for authorization. So can verify the authorization results. Every new authorization request will be verified, will be cached, and this can be maintained. And uh, the traffic will uh, so we cannot not going to impact the the perform the performance. So what's going to look like? So instead of using the regular authentication, we can of course use the Istio-based authentication. The Envoy proxy will extract the application or the or the microservice identity uh, and forward it. Uh, and forward it for the authorizer, uh, just like, you know, it's using it today. Uh, just decision will be made locally and will be uh, will maintained locally. Um, just a second. Okay. Um, authorization. Uh, will be uh, will be the same, so we can you know authorize user based on specific attributes, um, and then use the Envoy proxy for that uh, as well. We can get much flexible, more granular options, setting the rules uh, and caching those uh, results. Encryption can can spread around the entire cluster, so instead of keeping it uh, only specific to the control, we can run it, you know, all the cluster and trip, all the traffic between the microservices uh, and the brokers or even the internal, everything can be managed, you know, rotating certificates. Uh, it's going to be a much easier and simpler uh, task to do. So all in all, uh, with having, uh, with, you know, making those changes, you know, we can uh, make Istio a much friendlier 
to uh, Kafka. We can then, once we deploy together, we can uh, use all those mechanisms which today are not very advanced in Kafka. We can use the Istio mechanism and then we can uh, bring the Kafka to the same level of security like any other regular workload uh, that's running in, in Kubernetes. So we can really benefit uh, from both worlds together. But that brings us to the question, what do we do until that? Uh, and until we have uh, Istio friendly, what can be an intermediate uh, solution? And here we won't talk about what we are using today. Um, and today we're using the open policy agent. So the open policy agent uh, to do all the microservices authorization. Uh, just on a nutshell, the open policy agent, um, it's a popular tool. Uh, it decouple policy decision making from enforcement decision. Okay, so when we use open policy agent with Kafka, uh, we can we need to use a uh, an OPA plugin uh, inside you know the streams of Kafka, um, and this plugin can redirect or make authorization requests to the OPA server. So when OPA is using with Kafka, the Kafka authorizes your call through the plugin, the OPA server, uh, to evaluate the policy based on the input from the authorizers. Uh, input is the same set of information, just nothing changed. And then in OPA server, people can define uh, their policies and the OPA can evaluate any request uh, based on the policy and respond to the authorizer uh, with a decision whether the, re whether the request is allowed or not. And decision are cached by the authorizer to make sure performance uh, is not uh, is not uh, affected. So this is Open Policy Agent uh, in Portshift. Uh, we use the same architecture and use the same plugin, uh, also to allow people to communicate and define uh, their authorization rules, and then the Open plugin will forward it to Portshift. Portshift uh, will based on based act like just the OPA server and based on the predefined rules, we'll verify wh what users can access uh, what, uh, you know, what um, uh, topic, uh, what broker uh, can be accessed. We are focusing on, on topics. Um, all the new the communication going to be authorized. The microservices are going to be authenticated based on the runtime properties, you know, and the namespace they are deployed, their source of origin. Uh, we can use those customized identities and verify that our uh, users are author authenticated. And then the traffic encrypted is used to be done uh, e independently. So that's going to be how, how our cluster is going to look like. Um, you know, the main issue is the OPA plugin, getting information from the authorizers, calling port shift, and getting information. Uh, Istio is not really in place, not in the Kafka brokers, not in the Kafka pods, but it does being in, but used in the Kafka pods. But again, it's uh, the current version, which is still needs some modification to get it like, you know, in full fledged to get from all the benefits uh, enjoyed. So this is uh, from my side. I'll hand over to Nicolas. Nicolas, please take us through what you do in Marlo. I'm sorry, I was stuck on slide 21. So I will talk about uh, the Marlowe story and what happened in the practical side of stuff. Uh, what Marlowe is currently using, we are using a legacy system that was built for 25 years. It kept growing and became complex. And if I can recall correctly, it reached its end of life support in 2003. Not only that, but uh, the server-side application does everything. It receives requests, executes domain logic, retrieves and updates data from the database and responds back to the client. Modularity within the application is typically based on features of the programming language. Even a small change of to the application requires that the entire monolithic system is rebuilt and redeployed. It gets difficult for a change not to affect the whole system. As much as it grows over the years, it gets difficult and complex to maintain. 
And in order to scale the application, we would simply create more instances of that process. And usually it is not possible to scale the components in the canal. So moving to cloud native microservices and Kubernetes microservices. With the Kubernetes native deployments, we can get view on different metrics, such as CPU usage and RAM usage. The horizontal pod autoscalers give us the ability to scale the number of instances in a replication controller or replica set based on those metrics. We can also use the same metrics alongside with health checks to vertically scale our infrastructure when needed, even that we prefer scaling horizontally our infrastructure as well. And with the introduction of GitOps, deployment configs, Helm charts, we save a lot of time, we have better versioning, and obviously much easier rolling updates. So a bit about our architecture. This is a small representation of how our, how our system works. We still need to get data from our legacy system since we are still in development. So we have stateless apps in blue color that issue commands and events, but we still need to keep the state somewhere. So we decided to use Kafka and other storage services such as Elasticsearch to do that. Given all that, we need, and given that we needed to move forward to a hybrid environment at some point, which is a lengthy subject that I don't wanna get into today, we decided to move from managed Kafka services to Streamzy. Streamzy gave us freedom in so many ways, for example, leveraging all the Kubernetes concepts that I already talked about. We are able to use GitOps to, easy, to easily deploy a ton of Kafka's with a few clicks. We parameterize a lot of the configuration. It's pretty much secure in comparison with other services and it has a great community that is always willing to help. The problem with such environments and traditional firewalls is that they need skills to get configured well, especially on cloud native environments and complex networks. Imagine having to secure a whole Kafka cluster using regular expressions and having almost zero visibility on the request made. Furthermore, firewalls need uh, a lot of people to get configured, which reduces the agility and the acceleration of all the development, which is bad for everyone. We also sometimes need to give or block access on different layers, such as on the microservice level and more importantly on the topic level. Also, given that a lot of times now with the coronavirus days, we need to work from home. They need to secure the environment for specific IPs came up. And as much as we move forward, configuring and securing Streamzy, we realized that we need something more sophisticated than managed cloud services. And that's where PortShift jumped into the game to save our lives. So the PortShift solution gave us visibility on what requests are made with tables and nice graphs. We were able to set up rules on a very user-friendly environment. We are able to add rules for specific microservices and specific topics. And moving forward, I will show a small demo of how easily those stuff can be done. So on that demo, I will be using Argo CD, which is a great tool for GitOps. Another great tool is Lenses that is great for visualization of data in Kafka, among other stuff, but that's what I will show today. Obviously, I will use OpenShift, which is our Kubernetes cluster. Streamzy and our security solution, which is PortShift. So let me share my screen. With Argo, I will create a new app. I will give an application name, Afghan demo. I will select the default project. I will select auto create namespace. I will choose my Git repo and choose the root path. I'll choose my cluster and the namespace name I want. And after creating and sensing that, after some time we will have 
a full workable Kafka cluster on OpenShift. So let's see what happened. We have a broker, a Zookeeper, lenses, and the operator, and the Kafka Connect. Now let's head to lenses to see what's happening here. We have some topics, three topics with mock data created. Let's see what's inside. So some sensitive info of our customers, some customer information, and some IBAN numbers. All of those are mock data, don't worry. And let's head to post shift to see what we can do. We can click on policies and then connection rules. And let's start adding rules. I will select by pod and put the LNSSA pod name. Then next, I will select by Kafka. Here I can see my brokers and the cluster. I will select the broker that we just created. Next. I will select Kafka. Now we can see all the topics that are used in this broker. I will just select the IBAN numbers and the sensitive information. And I want to block access for reading and writing on those topics. Next, we just put a name. And then block the access. When I press finish and apply the policy, I will head back to lenses and after some time, I will lose access to it. So I cannot have access to those topics, but I still have access to the custom information that I want access to. So back to port shift. I will add another rule. I want to block access to IPs for everyone in the world. So I will put 0, 0, 0, 0. Easy as that. Sorry about that, 0. Next. I'll choose a name, lenses in that case. Next. Any protocol. And then block. I click finish and then apply the policy. I can get back to lenses. We need to wait a bit for it to work. Let's see what happens. Doesn't work on the, on the first refresh. But, uh, let's see the second one. Now it's blocked. Let's try again to be sure. blocked. But now I want to be able to work from home. So I will add my IP to be allowed. So let's select by IP. I will blur it out for now. So you can see my IP. I'm adding my IP and 32 for just one IP. Click next. Again, with the same name. Clicking next. Any layer 7 protocol. But now allow. I will add a name. Finish. And now, because I want this rule to have higher priority, I can easily move it up. So let's apply the policy. Go back to lenses, refresh. And 
now we have access to lenses, but we still don't have access to the topics we blocked. So that's good. So let's head back to PostShift to see the rest of the goodies it gives us. It has a nice dashboard with some risky workloads, events, connection, how much pods are running, permissions. It has a nice navigator, that's kind of a nice diagram on of what's happening now. We can expand this. And we can see all the external connections and all the internal connections. So one Kafka connect, connecting to the brokers and lenses connecting to brokers and some IPs from the outside connecting to lenses. Let's go to CI. We can see all our images here. We can see some vulnerabilities and how many there are in every image. We can click on the critical. We have a lot of information here, such as in the description, and we can click the exact CV to go to the CV page and see what's happening with that. So that's nice as well. And then we can go to the runtime, where we can see all the workloads running on our cluster and some more information, the result, if it's allowed, and then we can see all the connections happening right now. As you can see on the right side, we can even see which topics are accessed by which uh, workload. And finally, for the risk assessment of our system, we can select the scan time or schedule it. We can select the severity to report. And if we want, uh, we can select the namespace. We don't want to right now. After we click save, the scan is uh, starting. And after some time that I cut out, it's finishing and showing the vulnerabilities. So that's me. That's uh, it for my side. Heading back to Ariel to summarize the presentation. Thank you, Nicolas. Thank you for this uh, great demo. Uh, and thank you for showing uh, everything. Uh, and now, just to summarize everything, um, you know, Kafka, even when deployed in Kubernetes, uh, does require dedicated security tools. It does not benefit or inherent the uh, uh, security mechanism which are deployed. Uh, is you can be ideal candidate for to do it or to achieve this level. Um, some of the work in order to make it, it's not natively out of the box. Some require, will be enhanced in the future when sidecar containers will get the better treatment. And some require a little bit more tweaking by adding a dedicated filter in Envoy that can detect and manipulate the traffic. But with small fixes, I'm sure in the near future, uh, we'll be able to use Istio and to really get benefit uh, from all the security mechanisms and to bring the Kafka cluster to the same level of security, which allow everyone to use it freely and securely uh, in Kubernetes or in OpenShift. In the meantime, open source, the open policy agent can be used in order to customize a lot of the work, but having, but nevertheless, I'm sure in the near future, we'll be able to benefit from uh, the meshy Kafka and make a service mesh friendly Kafka. Um, so that's it. Thank you very much for joining. Thank you, Nicolas, for a great demo. And thank you for this for joining. And we'll be available for in the next few minutes for a few questions from the audience. Thank you.